It's time to go beyond the headlines Cause I don't put in overtime just so I can headline Okay, now it's Fox Sports, I'm live with Renee Going hard every day, sports rapping every play Different segments for your favorites Coming at you daily with positive vibes Yeah, we some game changers Basketball, football, soccer With different interviews, you never know who may pop up Listen, <laughs> only on Beyond the Headlines This is Beyond the Headlines <laughs> Only on beyond the headlines, this is beyond the headlines. <laughs> Only on beyond the headlines, this is beyond the headlines. We're Renee Washington. All right, guys, kicking off this week's episode of Beyond the Headlines with Renee Washington, we've got founder of the Football Game Plan and published author Emery Hunt in the building, so to speak. Emery, welcome to the show this week. Thanks for having me, Renee. I appreciate you bringing me on. As it's always my pleasure, so I'm happy to have you here because right now, as we talked about before the show and we talked about before, you know, this July period, everyone's just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. There's a lot of predictions flying around. We're looking, we're getting antsy for preseason. So we talked NFL last weekend with, or last week with Teron Davenport. This week with you, let's get into the college scene. Looking at college football, again, it's still very early, so everything's very surface level, but I'm going to just go right in and, and ask you which teams should we be looking for to, to make some noise this year? I think when you look at it, your usual suspects are always in the mix. Your Alabama's, Clemson, uh, Georgia looks pretty strong as, you know, in regards to what they have returning. I think those are the teams that you kind of want to keep an eye on because they are always in, in the mix. Oklahoma will be another one because uh, it seems like the machine just keeps rolling over there, especially now with their, you know, you talk about a team that has had back-to-back Heisman Trophy winners, and they have a legitimate chance to have a third with Jalen Hurts, who's coming over from Alabama. So those four teams are always in the mix, but it's always interesting to see which team that we're not talking about outside the top four kind of can make their move. And there's a bunch of those teams. You, you want to say maybe 20 to 30 teams that, that really have a, a good chance of, of making that, that run and, and getting on that magical you know, run to the playoffs. We saw Notre Dame do it last year. Um, you saw Georgia do it a couple of seasons ago uh, when they made their run. I think there's a few teams that you can keep an eye on. I think Florida could be one, depending on how Felipe Franks seems to grow as a quarterback. LSU could be another uh, because of what they're going to do with the second year of, of Joe Burrow. So there's a bevy of teams that are in the mix that we could probably uh, talk about. But when you look at the, the main four, it seems to always be Oklahoma, Alabama, Clemson, and also uh, Georgia. I love the storyline of the Oklahoma-Alabama rivalry that we're seeing with Jalen Hurts going to Oklahoma. And you meant, you make a lot of good points about those four being the big teams to watch. Obviously, Clemson last year going undefeated, dominating Alabama in the college football championship. You know, Georgia's a team that's been right there knocking on the door. So it'll be interesting to see if we have the usual suspects and if there's anybody that sneaks into that that mix that we're not really talking about right now. How do you think Hurts fits into with Oklahoma, though? Because I would love to see him step in and be able to now knock off Alabama. You know, that it's a storyline that's, that's brewing. But how do you think he fits with them offensively? I think he fits in perfectly. And one thing that's unique about his game is the fact that he has, uh, you know, championship pedigree. I mean, if it wasn't for right. Deion Watt having that last, second heroic drive, the last minute heroic drive, Jalen Hurts marched him right down the field and got the, the, the game, the, the go-ahead score, and would have won them that championship uh, a couple of seasons ago. So he's gotten them, you know, to the playoffs. He's gotten them to the championship game. And when you look at Oklahoma and the last two quarterbacks, Baker Mayfield loses to Georgia. Mm-hmm. You also look at Kyle Murray losing to Alabama. Well, Jalen Hurts has beaten teams in the playoffs and – beat Georgia last year uh, in, in, when he had to come off the bench. So they're getting the guy that actually may have better situational championship pedigree more so than the two Heisman Trophy winners that, that you know have left the program. So I think, you know, that right there going to that offense, we know he's going to put up points. He also has the rushing element that Kyle Murray has. I think he may be a better fit for, uh, you know, what, he want, what they want to do out there. I know people question his passing ability, but, we saw last year in limited duty that area of, of concern turned into a strength, and he looked really sharp against Georgia. Yeah, yeah. 
it is incredible to see the way that Oklahoma has been able to produce top quarterbacks. I mean, we don't know how Kyler Murray is going to fit into the NFL, of course. Um, but, of course, as of now, he's someone that's predicted to come right into the league and make some noise. But you look at Baker Mayfield, you look at Kyler Murray last year, and now having Jalen Hurts step into that position, he might be the one that can you know, help them turn a corner, so to speak. So we'll see what happens there. But are there any teams right now that we're not discussing in these big four? You talk about Notre Dame. You know, we've seen um, some other teams that are kind of on the rise, I guess, Anyone else that you think could be a sleeper? I know there's some games to watch this season that look like they may be an upset as of July. <laughs> but for you personally, anybody you see on this on the schedule with matchups, with you know how they played last year, moving into this season, that's really going to be able to step up and maybe upset some people. I'm just interested in seeing how Ohio State does. You know, full year no Urban Meyer, full year. Mm. Uh, no quarterback that we know, veteran quarterback, it was J.T. Barrett, and we kind of saw, kind of knew about Dwayne Haskins. So now you have a fresh new guy out there in uh, perhaps Justin Fields who transferred from Georgia. So you have all of those things going, let's say, against Ohio State on offense, and you want to see how that's going to play itself out. Defensively, they should be stacked once again despite the losses to the draft and graduation. Ohio State is right. going to be Ohio State. I'm just interested in seeing how this offense will look, you know, how Justin Evans will look because he was the number one recruit coming out of high school, goes to Georgia, couldn't beat out Jake Fromm, and now he finds himself at Ohio State and the starter. And again, we saw a one-year start in Dwayne Haskins, but we saw him play his retro freshman year. And, you know, we don't really – you still don't know what we're going to see from Justin Fields as a full-time starter. So, to mm-hmm. me, that's probably one of the bigger storylines I'm, I'm – excited to see play out of uh, the season. Yeah, the Ohio State. They've definitely been very busy, but uh, sometimes that could work against you. If it's, you know, the the season is long, but every game is just as important as the last. And so if they can't figure out how to get a momentum going, especially offensively. You talk about being solid defensively. But for as much as defense can help you win games, if field can step in and they have some sort of chemistry offensively to be able to, to score touchdowns, I don't know. I'm not sure. That's a good point you bring up. So where do you think they fit into all this? It's kind of hit or miss, right, as of now, seems like. Anyway. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's still up in the air. I mean, that's why, you, you you know, you're excited to see things play out. I, you know, if I want to toss another team in there that people need to keep an eye on, I think, um, and we'll see this matchup very early in the season. And if they can win this game, I don't think they'll lose the game the rest of the way. And that's Ooh. Army. I think Army is going to be really good once again this year. They were great last year, and I think they're going to be even better this season. They took Oklahoma to overtime and actually had a chance to win that game in overtime. So Mm -hmm. I think Army against Michigan early in the season is a big matchup. If Army can knock off Michigan, which they have a great chance to, Army's defense is outstanding, um, especially in the secondary, and we know what that option can do to kind of get you out your game as well. I think when you look at that matchup in conjunction with the rest of the season, that's, to me, the toughest game of the year on their schedule. And if they can pull off the upset, Army may go undefeated. Wow. I like that. Bold prediction, but why not? I mean, that September overtime game last year versus Oklahoma, that was uh, that was one to watch. And the – you talk, I mean, defensively they have the ability to hold top offenses like Oklahoma to, you know, quarters where they're scoreless. That's something that can be a game changer when you, you think about being able to go undefeated, you know, beating Michigan, moving forward to have a successful season. It's possible. So that being said, Emery, players to watch for you. Who stands out? I mean, we talk about Jalen Hurts. Obviously quarterbacks are always big names to keep an eye on because they tend to be the general of the offense. But – who else do you see across college football right now that maybe is going to have a breakout season this upcoming year, you know, whether they were a freshman or sophomore last year, and now this year they're going to have a breakout season, or just someone that maybe did not go into the NFL, stayed another year, and is going to come back and, and really be a big-name player? Well, I'm excited to see DeAndre Swift, the running back from Georgia. Um, you know, the last couple seasons he's been playing, not second fiddle, but he's been in the rotation with some pretty good backs, Tony Michelle and Nick Chubb. Um, last year it was Elijah Holyfield. 
Um, so now he's he's the guy, and I thought he was the best back out of those three that I mentioned. So now he gets his turn to be the lead dog, pun intended, and I think he's going to take out and leave as a, as a junior. Um, he was he was showing NFL level traits as a true freshman, and I just think it's it's, it's going to keep going, uh, trekking in that direction this year as a junior. And I just I think he's going to probably end up hitting that 2,000 yard mark uh, this year in that Georgia running game because he's just so explosive, so dynamic. I think he's the best back in the country. Wow. And, you know, I actually covered DeAndre Swift when he was in high school at St. Joe's Prep. I covered him playing against when I was at, with the uh, Bucks County fo- High School football, playing against, you know, the different high schools in the area. And he, at that time, I was like, this kid is something special. You know, you could see it in his build and his size and how quick he – I mean, Swift is a very fitting name. Um, but he's like a bowling ball rolling through there. And his his freshman year at Georgia, I was like, wow, he transitioned so smoothly into the college game from high school. You know, sometimes you see players, especially in their first and second year, physically they, they can't match up or take some time for them to adjust. He stepped right into the, the Bulldog roster offensively as a freshman, and you were like – wait a minute, he's only a freshman? <laughs> you know? And so I agree with you. I think now as a junior, someone that you know has stayed in the college game, has grinded it out, put his time in, and had success early on, you have to only imagine what can that do for him now as a junior on a very hungry Georgia team that's trying to knock off an Alabama, a Clemson, Oklahoma. So I, I'm, I love – seeing how he's exploded. He's kind of like my claim to football fame right now because I'm like, I remember when. <laughs> Anyone else you got, Emery? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you were a former college athlete, and you know how it is, how tough it is for an incoming freshman to mm-hmm. really compete right away. And, you know, the fact that he was able to do that, hit the ground running and, and look like he's been there forever, you know, that that's impressive. So, I agree with you. I, I think he's going to be outstanding. Um, I think that that pretty much covers it for me. Um, again, I, I would I would always keep an eye on on these underrated schools and you know just looking at Army's schedule. It's September seventh. Yeah. It's when they play Michigan week two. Um, My birthday. <laughs> and there you go. It'd be a nice birthday for <laughs> Wolverines in in um, in the big house and the rest of that schedule. I know obviously you have to really count. You know Navy. That's always a tough game, but Right. Army looks legit strong, and, and that's the only game on the schedule I think um, could be a loss. Yeah, that'll be that'll be one to watch. September 7th, my birthday, tune in for that. But um, you bring up Army-Navy, which is interesting as, you know, one of the more historic football rivalries that are incredible with the amount of fans and alumni and things like that. Looking at rivalries or just maybe a game like Army versus Michigan, is there a specific game that you're really looking forward to this season that's kind of, I mean, you talk about Army-Michigan, so don't use that one again. Is there a game this season that you really look at that's kind of going to be a turning point for, for college football or maybe something that there's a lot at stake early on that you're really looking forward to got circled on your calendar? Well, it, it's an it's a FCS game that I'm looking forward to seeing because we haven't seen these two teams play in quite some time. And that's Florida A and M and Southern. You know, if you look back last year, that was a game that everybody kind of was hoping would have been the Celebration Bowl because those two mm-hmm. teams would set attendance records for that game. They would have sold out the Georgia Dome if FAMU and Southern would have made it. And now they're playing in a regular season, and we hadn't seen these right. play probably eight years, eight or nine years, uh, maybe even ten years, I believe. And so now they're playing, and now it's going to, and both teams are good. So that game should be packed. It's going to be fun to watch. Uh, there are some pro prospects in that game, two outstanding quarterbacks, um, and it should be for it should be a big game in you know in both the MIAC and in the SWAC. So it's a big HBCU game that that yeah. could have a lot riding on who could potentially go to the Celebration Bowl. So again, because we hadn't seen these two teams two teams play, they used to play a lot in the Atlanta Classic. Um, Oh, you know, in the 90s. So now mm-hmm. we're seeing them play again, and that game is going to be one heck of a uh, football game, both on the field and with the, the atmosphere surrounding it because, again, those two teams tend to sell out. Uh, they used to sell out a lot when they played each other in the Georgia Dome, and I think you know, getting them on the schedule this year 
uh, for the first time in quite some time, it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, well, I have to honestly say this conversation has me so excited for college football because right now we're kind of in a lull. Like, there, there's really nothing major going on in sports. We're just waiting for preseasons to get started. The World Cup just ended. We're just, listen, we're just waiting, you know, for everything, basically. And so to have this talk about college football, and, and one thing I love about college sports in general, specifically college football, is you see all the passion and emotion that goes into it. You know, these guys are just playing. They're just playing the game they love. I mean, of course, the whole question of should they be paid or not is a whole other issue that we won't get into, but... I just love seeing these young guys like uh, DeAndre Swift that are really making a name for themselves, and you see them over the years as they're developing. So I'm excited for it. I definitely have some of these games circled on my schedule. But, Emery, thank you so much for joining us on the show this week. We will definitely have you back on as we get closer to, the, to college football or even getting into the season because you're someone that always is providing a lot of good expertise and you're very knowledgeable, and you know, so I love everything that you talk about and that you do. So where can other people find you on social media so they can follow along too? Well, I appreciate the compliment. Thank you so much. <laughs> you do a great job here as well. They can follow me on Twitter at FBallGamePlan, and always check out our website at FootballGamePlan.com, as well as our thriving YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash FootballGamePlan. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you again, and uh, let's look forward to the college football season.